Hello and welcome back to another PC troubleshooting video where today we've got another broken PC. This PC does power on, but there's no post on the monitor. Okay, so Sean, this is your gaming PC. Mm -hmm. and how old are you? 12. 12, so that's pretty good at 12 to build your, your first PC. And you've got some really nice specs in it. So you've got a 7600X, a B650 motherboard, and an RTX 4060. So a really nice PC and it was working okay for you. Yep. And then all of a sudden it stopped Yes. And then it worked for a little while again and stopped working again. Yep. Okay. And you've done a wee bit of troubleshooting. You know you, your graphics card goes up in the top slot, but you've actually yeah. moved it down. And you've tried it without the graphics card as well. Mm -hmm. And you've tried clearing your... And plugged it into the, mother, the motherboard. The motherboard. And you've tried clearing your CMOS as well, haven't you? you yeah, the I took the battery out. There weren't any buttons or a um, CMOS reboot thing that you do with the screwdriver. Okay. And is there anything else you've tried? No. No, okay, so we're going to have to try and get this back up and running and get you back gaming again. Yes. Okay, so looking at the PC, what we can see is we have fan spinning, our AO is spinning, and I can feel water going through the tubes. We know our graphics card's not in the right slot, but it had been in the top slot and not working as well. Um, we've got a lot of cables at the front, so we can get some of these moved to the back if we get the PC up and running. But the biggest thing that's jumping out at me is the debug LEDs. So we take a look at the LEDs, we can see our top two LEDs are illuminated. So the top one's for CPU and the second one down is for DRAM. So we've got two warning lights on the motherboard telling us there's something either wrong with our CPU or our RAM. Okay, so the first thing, because the RAM light is on, I'm just gonna take your RAM light and try and reset it. What I'm actually gonna do is rather than put your RAM back in, I'm just gonna put one stick that I know that actually works just in case it's your RAM. Okay. And then if we do this and it's it works, we can work our way backwards. It will, and we just have to watch those wee lights to see what happens with it. Well, the lights have gone out. There we go, so we've got a, we've got a post with the lights out. So what we'll do, we'll go back in and we'll try your RAM. It might just have not been in right. Yeah, and the lights are out. It just maybe the RAM wasn't correctly set, seated in the socket. It might have been a wee bit loose, which is why it worked at the start, stopped working and worked again. And even just moving the system about could have been enough to to do that. So we'll, we will give the system a good check elsewhere and we'll make sure everything else is plugged in where it should be. And um, we'll get your graphics card moved up to the top slot and we'll do a wee bit of cable management as well, try and get the PC looking nice and clean on the, the inside. Um, now there is one other wee thing I'm noticing. So if we take a wee look up at the top, you can see that neither your AIO pump or any of your CPU fans are plugged into the CPU fan header or pump header. So we, everything must be plugged into your um, fan hub at the back or system fan headers. So we'll have a wee look at that. You should have your CPU fan, the fans and the radiators plugged into the CPU fan header. Oh. Uh, and then your AIO pump, because there's normally a pump header up there as well. So we'll get them all plugged into the, the right slots. And you were saying something about the ARGB as well, weren't you? Mm -hmm. the, bu the button doesn't change all the ARGB. And it ch it's, just, ch it's just, just changing those ones. Yeah, and it's not changing the ARGB on your cooler. Mm -hmm. are your top fans. So what we would need to do is plug all the RGB cables into the controller at the back and that way that button would control everything. Uh -huh. It won't control your graphics card. You have to use software to control the, the RGB on that. But with ah, the... that's okay. <coughs> so you had taken your battery out. Yeah. But there's wee jumpers, just the, these two pins here. Uh -huh. So you just have to join them with a the screwdriver. For about 10 seconds for the power off and that will just clear the CMOS. So that might be another problem actually that, see there, there's just a wee push when I click that, I clicked in. Now that looks to be sitting lovely in the socket and your pins all look good, there's no damage to any of them. This power supply was the only really second hand component in the system. It doesn't really need change, it's a 650 watt power supply but it is a number of years old. And Thermaltake do have this nice new smart BX3 750 watt power supply, it's the latest 3.1 standard. So we'll go ahead and put it into the system just to future proof it going forward. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's just so important that we plug these cables in right that I would actually take the effort of taking that down. So I can see they're going in and feel the click rather than just trying to do it behind that cutter. Yeah. So that one, the wee clip has definitely gone down. And that's your second one. Is this to power the motherboard? This powers your CPU, so it gives the CPU extra power, that, that cable there. There. Perfect. There we go. That looks good. 
Okay, and then pull that cable all the way through to the back again. See how that looks nice and tidy now, doesn't it, at the front? Mm -hmm. Everything's plugged into that wee controller. So now when you mm -hmm. press the button, the, light, the fans at the top and the pump and your fans in the case should all light up with that. Sweet. And when I started YouTube, I never bothered doing this because I was going to take the PC down later that day and then everybody kept commenting that my, about my bad cable management. So <laughs> I've now started, I have, to, I have to manage the cables even, even though in half an hour I'm going to be tearing the PC down. That should give it a good push now. And hear that click. So mm -hmm. see that wee clip is closed. That's perfect. Okay, so let's, moment of truth, Sean, let's see if this works. Okay, so the wee lights are going out. They've all gone out. Okay. So hopefully a post shall come up on the monitor in a minute. There we go. So we've got our, we've got our post. Nice. So we can see that definitely does look a lot cleaner now with all the cables in the back. Graphics cards moved up. And hopefully your ARGB is going to work. Sean, do you want to try pressing the button and see if it changes everything? Sure. Yep. Yep, see all your, all your fans are changing. The only thing that won't change is your graphics card, but you're able to do that with the software inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll plug a keyboard and mouse in and then we'll go into the BIOS and make a few changes. Sure. So your RAM can run at 6,000 megatransfers per second. So we'll go ahead and enable that. So we'll, let's go for Expo Profile 1 and that'll get your RAM running nice and fast. We've got all our different fans here and what they're reacting to. So this is your CPU fan, and this is why it's a good idea to separate everything out. So you can control your fans, your pump, and all your case fans separately. Uh, the light's orange. Yeah. It, it might work through that and see. If it doesn't, it's, it's, it doesn't like the RAM running that expo setting. Which we might have to do a bias update to get it to, to do that, potentially. Mm. That's strange. Maybe plug it into the top one. I'd shoot those back ones should work though. Ah, oh, there's it there. And it'll just mean your BIOS is running the latest settings. Might be better. It might, it might just have needed your drivers that I installed. Oh, that's better. Oh, it, was okay. just, it was just those drivers that I've installed, so that's fixed that. It's just the temperatures I don't like. Mm -hmm. But your CPU temperatures are really high. Mm -hmm. They're up in the 70s. And it's it's sitting at idle. Not so sure your your cooler is sitting right on the board, or it's it's working properly. The pump is running. I can feel stuff going through it. It's in the fifty, so we can start and stress this a wee bit. Yeah, it's hitting ninety six, ninety seven. It shouldn't be doing that. Are you okay? We'll change that cooler out. I'd rather get it. I'd rather get it right, sure. and he doesn't have problems down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean... you can hear the water moving around this one, can't you? Mhm. Mm oh, CPU core temperature thirty nine. Yes. That's better. So there's your CPU, it's now 39, it was up at uh, 70, 80 before at idle. Uh, so it's sitting about 39, 40, which is where it should be sitting. Graphics is lovely at 30, but it's, it's capped out at the 80s, which is where it, where it should be. You, you were, you was in there, it's, it's holding it steady. Yeah. You see, it's, that's the load coming down, mm -hmm. and we'll watch your temperature. So that's falling straight away, mm -hmm. and you hear your fans kicking down. So that cooler is working. I don't think I don't think the pump was working on that old cooler. I could hear it. Feel, I could feel some water going through it, but not to not to the same degree as what you can feel here. Gotcha. So I think the pump was gone on that day. I/O. That's just finished. Sean, PC is up and running again. So it turned out it probably was just the the memory not seated properly. Mm -hmm. um, was the, the reason you were having that problem? We got that uh, fixed quite quickly. And then there was a few other wee bits. It was mostly cable management, getting all those cables to the back. And then we discovered that actually your CPU temperatures were really high. And actually it probably was a, a problem with the pump on that AIO that you were using because we got mm -hmm. it very quickly changed um, and got the temperatures down. What, what do you think the major bits for you were learning from that? Hmm. Probably the, the cooling. The cooling. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's always worth when you when you build your PC checking what the temperatures are doing and I just seen it in the bias and they were too high for what your CPU should be and it, it made me think there's a problem. And then when we mm -hmm. changed it out to that new IO the temperatures are, are half of what they were and they, they look much better. So that, that could have been a problem long term. Your PC still would have worked, but it wouldn't have lasted as long if your CPU was constantly overheating. So definitely worth um, fixing. And then the other thing was the stability. When we got your memory running at the correct speed once we updated the bias and it was much more stable for, for posting, so definitely worth doing that. 
and the USB problems we have by installing the, the chipset drivers seem to solve those issues as well. So it's important just to make sure your software is up to date as well, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I had, good, I had good fun doing that today. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, it was great. Well, that's great. Thanks for bringing your PC along. Fine. Okay, do you want to tell people to like the video? Yeah, like and subscribe. Yeah, thanks.